does that mean? Well, that means there's a change in the starting lineup, as you will see J.D. Davidson getting the start tonight for the Alabama Crimson Tide in the backcourt, along with Shackelford. And here is Davidson with the basketball to start things off. One of the keys you'll see from Vanderbilt is this right here. They've improved defensively. That's the reason for the change in this program in the six wins in SEC play this year. Vanderbilt going with these gold jerseys. They have been successful in getting this guy back on the court healthy. Liam Robbins has also been a big boost for the Commodores. Yeah, Liam Robbins, he reminded us, he said, listen, I went against Luca Garza, Kofi Coltburn. I went against some of the best in the country, Dave. Davidson knocks home the three. As you look at that starting lineup, Davidson in that lineup tonight. The guy that's out, Javon Quinterly, averaging almost 14 a game. And there is a message being sent right away from Nate Oates. Well, he built a tremendous culture last year, and he wants to keep that going. You think about guys like John Petty, Herbert Jones, Bruner. All of those guys set a standard, and Coach Nate Oates wants to keep that standard, and he's done a good job of that this season. Pippen takes it right to the big fella, Charles Bediaco, and draws a foul on Bediaco, the freshman center out of Ontario, Canada. And that'll get Pippen to the free throw line where he has lived again this year. He is making his 203rd and 204th free throw attempts of the season. Well, it's a lesson to young players out there. If you want to be a proven scorer night in and night out, the charity strike needs to be part of your ingredients. It needs to be part of the recipe for your success. And Scotty Pippen Jr. not only gets to the free throw line, but because he is so crafty, he keeps the defense off guard, which allows him to really do whatever he wants to do when he's in between the lines. Well, Nate Oates doesn't waste much time. He gets Gurley out of the game. Gurley got the start. They went kind of a double big with the Vanderbilt bigs of Melora Brown and Robbins. But now James Rojas is on the court for Gurley. Oh, a nice no look from Davison, but Alabama can't finish, and back comes Pippen the other way. Yeah, for Vanderbilt, they have 6'10 and 7 feet on the interior. That's what Alabama's going to be going against when they penetrate to the basket. Robbins hit his first three of the game. There's a follow by Wright working hard underneath. Commodores will reset it offensively. This is a team that averages 69 points a game. That's 12th in the conference, but they've gotten better offensively as this season has gone on. That's the guy right there. When they go small like this, day, J.D. Davidson actually has to rebound almost like a power forward. He's the one that has the most athleticism amongst the guards to complete the defensive possession with the rebound. Last strips it to Bediaco. Jordan Wright, the junior, 6'6", 215. He is a physical specimen now. Yeah, you think about losing 20 pounds in the offseason. He's improved in every aspect of his basketball game. Not a good pass by Pippen. Davidson now. Rojas this time lines it up, fires away, and that went off the mark. Good block out by Wright on Betty Ocko. Either team off to a hot start. Vandy one out of four. Alabama one out of three. Still early, partner. Still early. Another three by Robbins. He hit his first one. <laughs> it's not looking good, no. though, is it? <laughs> that one missed it all. Well, for Alabama, uh, they are 11th in the nation in their offensive efficiency. That's not where they're having their challenge. So that offense will come. It's the defense and where they have to continue to show improvement. And right. Boy, good work there by Shackelford to draw the contact. First on right. Well, the NBA game has really had so much impact on the college game. Every player on this court right now wants to play in the NBA, whether they'll tell you that or not. And so they all watch what Steph Curry does, what James Harden does, Kyrie Irving, trying to get to the line. 
Davidson takes it himself. Boy, rattles off the rim into the hands of Melora Brown. Dump it inside to Robbins. There's a foul on Betty Ako. That'll be his second. Boy, we haven't played four minutes yet, and the big man with two fouls. Oh, they're going to call a double foul. Liam Robbins. Also, a double foul. Robbins and Betty Ako. Well, a lot of times they miss the first foul. And that time, I would have actually called that foul on Betty Ako. He was using his knee to push Robbins off of the block. Lawrence just stumbled. Davidson comes up with the basketball, and then Lawrence fouls Davidson to the free throw line. He'll go. Well, that's where Alabama's lethal. Uh, we, we realize what they've already done when you're talking about a team that's had uh, tied for the fourth most quad one wins in the nation. Only three teams in the nation have more quad one wins than Alabama. They have carried the torch for the SEC this season. With that being said, they've had a couple of losses on the road at Georgia and Missouri. I think this is a great test for Alabama against a quality Vanderbilt team who's much different with Leon Robbins in the lineup. So Gurley back on the floor. Betty Aka with those two fouls will head to the bench now. J.D. Davidson, SEC Freshman of the Week. He averaged 14 and a half points and seven rebounds and six assists in games against Mississippi State and Kentucky last week. Kentucky is hot as any team in the nation right now, even in spite of that loss to Tennessee and Mississippi State able to sweep Missouri to try to keep their NCAA yeah. tournament hopes alive. Dave. They're clinging to them. <laughs> I mean, so there, as long as you're in the conversation, you got a shot. Speaking of shots, Lawrence misses Davis in the rebound. Let's watch and see if the tempo picks up a lot for Alabama. They're a lot smaller. You see that quick look? Shackleford comes up with the ball, a little too strong, knocked out of bounds. Joe Lindsay says it'll belong to the Commodores, and that'll get us to our first time out. Combined 2 of 12 to start this one, but Alabama with a one-point lead. And for the other players and for the staff, so it really puts you away uh, from the action going on at the opposing end for your team, but it actually has you so much closer to the action even underneath your own basket uh, in the second half. I remember coaches for a while couldn't even get beyond the baseline. Yeah, it was good that they extended that. Nice screen and roll. Well, Laura Brown finishes it off. Right out of the timeout, a good set called by Coach Jerry Stackhouse. Coaches all across the league talk about trying to prepare for Vanderbilt and the different sets that they run offensively. The Shackleford. That's a challenge violation. Deshaun Holt, the freshman out of Roswell, Georgia, with the extra step. He's been getting more and more minutes here the last few weeks. Well, I think it's realizing that they need to increase their debt. And that time, Miles was actually hugging on the opposite side. I thought it was a good set and just miscommunication for uh, for Alabama. Alabama hadn't won three in a row before that loss to Kentucky, where offensively the Crimson Tide played well enough to win. Coach Oates saying after that game, they wasted a great offensive game, especially Keon Ellis with his 28. Here's Pippa, keeps it alive, goes with the left hand. Well, that's the advantage in this basketball game. The Commodores are bigger, they're stronger. Uh, their ability to get to the realm as they now work on this pressure against the freshman, J.D. Davidson. Get a tie up, and the arrow favors Vanderbilt. Well, Scotty Pippa Jr. goes over the outstretched arms, but you see there was no... Hunger for the basketball by Alabama. That's one that you have to go get. Noah Gurley had his hands on it, just took a wrong bounce, and Scottie Pippen Jr. right there to receive the reward. Alabama's turned it over on five of their ten possessions here in the first few minutes of this game. Well, listen, let's be frank. They're a different basketball team without Javon Quinterly in the basketball game. Pippen, five points, a rebound, and an assist here in the opening six-plus minutes. And a hand check out on the perimeter. That'll go against Tyron Lawrence. 
Dave, take a look at Scotty Pippen Jr. here. He just doesn't get sped up. He plays at his own pace. He is the definition of a coach on the floor, one of the best that you'll see, uh, like Gillespie at, at, uh, at Villanova. Guys that just think the game so good, if you could put a coach on the floor, he would be an example of that. Pippen's the one who picked up that foul. We'll take a break for a moment. Loose ball, Melora Brown comes out of there with it. Heaves it down the court to right. Takes it himself. Contact and count it. He will head to the free throw line. Pretty basketball. For all the teams that think you should just walk the ball up the court, take a look at this. You've got to put offensive pressure on defense. He's going against three defenders, but they're discombobulated. They don't know who they're guarding, who's got the ball. That's the best time to score. And as March Madness is around the corner, you watch the teams that excel and that advance. That will be the teams that actually get out and score early offense before the defense sets up. So Jordan right to the free throw line. 80% sixth in the conference and free throw shooting and knocks that one down cleanly and Vanderbilt up by eight Quinterly almost lost it see how he plays coming off the bench tonight That won't go back the other way The zoning Dumps it to Malore Brown great block shot there by miles and another tie-up Alabama will get it. Yeah, Darius Miles for Alabama, 6'6", 185 pounds, the sophomore out of Washington, D.C. I think he's going to be critical for Alabama. Number one, he's an emotional kid, uh, and that emotion can be up and down, good or bad. I would always rather have emotion versus apathy. He has the length to where he can help get rebounds. He can help with rim protection when he's making shots. He's extremely dangerous, and he has a great ability to go and finish at the rim. We've seen some of the more athletic plays out of Darius Miles from Alabama this year. Laura Brown will take a seat. Darren Frank checks in, the sophomore out of Los Angeles. Under 13 to go, first half. High screen, Bediaco. Back on the floor with those two fouls. Ellis threw it up to Bediaco. Nice catch by the big fella. Well, he, he actually misread it, but it was a great catch. That's where the, the freshman in Charles Bediaco is still learning, right? It was the right play. Next time, he's just got to be ready to catch that lob. That's where the chemistry will still continue to get better for Alabama. Bad pass by Wright. Ellis fires no good. Boy, Ellis had some kind of game. Alabama keeps it alive. Miles gets it to Shackelford. Boy, he makes that nine out of ten times, if not ten out of ten. Yeah, absolutely. Really good defensive transition this time by Alabama. After those six turnovers, they've started to settle down a little bit. Javon Quinterly, the veteran, uh, showing a little bit more poise. Offensive foul against the Zoni. Alabama trailing on the road there for so long. We had a chance to to talk a little bit at their shoot around earlier, and we were just talking about the difference, right? As you've had so many different coaching changes, you had Anthony Grant, who's doing a phenomenal job uh, at Dayton this year. You had the coach of the year in the NBA and Avery Johnson, but Nate Oates just took it to that next level, and this culture that he's fighting for right now is the reason why Alabama has taken the next step. Good strong work there on the inside from Keon Ellis, the 6'6 senior out of Eustis, Florida, averaging a little less than 12 a game. Yeah, you think about guys that just don't allow you to lose. Uh, you think about KD Johnson at Auburn, uh, Keon Ellis here at Alabama, uh, Kennedy Chandler at Tennessee. There's certain guys, or Zakai Ziegler too, certain guys that make plays when the game is on the line. Keon Ellis is that guy for Alabama. And he leads him in plus minus. When you're on the floor, does your team, what's the point differential? He's plus 91 when he's on the floor. That's the best on the Alabama team. See? Always making you look good. Right? 
<laughs> it's hard, but I'm trying. It's hard work, isn't it? <laughs> Here's Ellis. And he's fouled. He'll head to the free throw line. Boy, not a good foul there as Pizzoni hits Keon Ellis behind the arc. That'll be three free throws for the guy who leads the conference in free throw percentage at 88%. Well, when you're playing Alabama, they can speed you up so fast offensively and defensively because you have to be ready to contest. And they do a nice job of shot fake making a split-second decision or distributing the basketball or getting to the rim. And that time, Dizoni just caught, got caught up into that tempo a little bit. Hey, the second game of our Wednesday night men's doubleheader features Jabari Smith, number three Auburn. They'll host Ole Miss at 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central after Mississippi State and South Carolina set the table for the Rebels and the Tigers. You can see both those right here on the SEC Network and, of course, the ESPN app. Coach Kermit Davis and the Rebels still battling in spite of those injuries. And it's amazing, Auburn fans in a roar and lost three games. Yeah, I know. Nick Crazy, like, what's wrong with Auburn? <laughs> Games. The expectations are high. And, and Alabama's wondering, what are we doing? I mean, think about where the state of Alabama basketball is right now. And we're talking about these teams, and, they're, and they might be struggling, and they're so good. Right. It's the commitment that's been made throughout the SEC. Intercepted there by Vanderbilt. Another turnover. Alabama just not in sync offensively. Pippen bumped by Ellis on the perimeter. Will that be a two or a three? Let's see what Joe Lindsay says. That'll be three coming up for Pippen. Scotty Pippen Jr. has an uncanny way of finding the contact. And that's part of that basketball IQ that I was talking about. When you think about Keon Ellis, that's one of the better, defen better defenders in the SEC. Uh, and he kind of looked at Joe Lindsay with his hands up like, what did I do wrong on that particular play? But Scotty Pippen Jr. just knows how to find the contact. Dorsey will check out in just a moment. Tony Green, our one of our officials, says you got to wait. It's three free throws, not two. So you got to wait for the second, and then we'll get you out. So Robbins will check back in now for the Commodores. J.D. Davison back on the floor now for Alabama. Shackleford will take a seat with 10-19 to go in the first half. He didn't one of these teams shoot the ball very well. Tapped around and right to Davison. Well, that's what Alabama has to do. They have to gang rebound. Even though they're a team that likes to get out and run, there is no run without securing the defensive possession. Well, Gary can't finish. He got right to the rim. Mass got bumped. He takes it off and will throw it to the bench. Hitting the LSU game. Been wearing that mask ever since. And a blocking foul against Alabama as Miles Studi drops baseline. Yeah, but Dave, that all began with the penetration of Scotty Pippen Jr. And you see Miles Studi, but what, what you don't see is how it all began when Scotty Pippen Jr. came down he forced the issue he drew the defense which put Alabama's defense into rotation which then allowed the, the ability for the driving lane for Miles Studio. Well there's been no point production at all for either one of these teams off the bench. There is Gary getting a Face mask put back on. We got hit in the LSU game. It was back on January 19th. Still wearing that mask. Broke his sinus cavity. Just the sound of that yeah. makes me hurt. I don't even want to continue the conversation. <laughs> Let's move on. Here's Davidson. <laughs> Well, they left him open, and he can't get the shot to go down. Rebound there by Lawrence. Alabama's a different team when J.D. Davis is making that shot. Those are the kind of shots he was making against Gonzaga in Seattle. Boy, Vanderbilt looks really good. Robbins steps to the logo. Can't get it to go, but another foul. Ellis will pick up that foul. And again, Nate Oates trying to find 
something. He'll make another quick substitution as Holt will check back in. You know, Dave, you think about when teams continue to improve and how about Scotty Pippen and his usage rate? It's got to be one of the highest in the country. You think about how much is ran through Scotty Pippen Jr., but Vanderbilt was picked 13th. They were picked 13th. Now, you know, you got about seven, eight teams that are one or two games apart from LSU uh, to, to Texas A&M. Vanderbilt six and eight right now. Uh, if Coach Jerry Stackhouse was able to make a, a run or a push for the duration of this year, he would have to be sneaky in the conversation for Coach of the Year. Well, they entered the week just one game out of a tie for fifth in the conference. Six and eight. Here's Ellis. Oh, Woo! there you go. That's the guy that knocked down 10 out of 16 from the field against Kentucky. And also 7 of 11 from behind the arc. Yeah, when you got multiple guys who can score 20, 25, 28 points like Ellis, Davidson, Quinterly, Shackelford, that's what makes him tough. Robbins, the transfer from Minnesota, foul. Boy, talk about a usage. Ever since he's kind of gotten back into this lineup here the last few weeks, each game more and more goes through him as well. Well, and you think about what type of experience he brings to the table. Oscar Sheedway, phenomenal big. Uh, you think about Colin Kester, Walker Kessler. But it's no one that he's going to be intimidated when you think about the Kofi Coburns and the Luca Garzas and all the different bigs out of the Big Ten that he's went against. And so he just brings a different level of confidence, of physical toughness, of length, and interior presence for the Commodores. Here's Quinterly. Where Pippen gave him a little bit of room to the right, and Quinterly took advantage of it. Everyone on the court saw that he was going, but no one was able to get there quick enough to stop him. Oh! Offensive foul. Boy, Lawrence flying to the basket, hanging in the air, but out of control. Tyron Lawrence, the sophomore guard, 6'4", tries to take flight. But you got to give a lot of credit. James Rojas stood in there. You talk about tough guys. He's one of the tougher guys in the league. I was at Tennessee Arkansas game on Saturday. Mm -hmm. and there were a lot of guard penetration to the basket, offensive block charge type calls. After the game, Rick Barnes was really upset saying, if a guy leaves his feet, you got to let him come down. You sure. can't slide under him. And I think we're seeing more and more of that from a defensive perspective. These guys get up in the air and got to slide underneath them. Yeah. And it looks like they're set. But the offensive guy's are already in the air. You got to do a better job of protecting the players. And that's something that, uh, you know, J.D. Collins and the officials will look at. But I, I think the game has gotten to a place to where the charge is now looked at as something so valuable, so promising. Yeah. Boy, Holt misses everything. How about Jalen Williams of Arkansas, by the way? Is Right, speaking of charges. Yeah, he's drawn, <laughs> he has taken, or drawn, whatever you want to say it, 40 charges for Arkansas this year. 40. That's crazy. Yeah, it's impressive when you can block a shot or draw a charge. Winner. Davidson takes it inside, runs into Robbins. Nowhere to go, lost the handle, another turnover for the Crimson Tide. That's what scouts are talking about at the next level is J.D. Davidson's ability or lack thereof to make decisions with Liam Robbins. If you don't know, now you know mentality from behind that three-point line continues to shine. Robbins came in just from behind the arc. Had hit one of five in his shortened season, but tonight he is hit two. The only two for the Commodores. How about the big man? The little guys a little bit later, but how about these names? B.J. Mackey, Chris Warren. Scotty Pippen Jr. has the most points in his in his first 80 games, and he's mentioned with names like those. Here's Vanderbilt, a little run out, two on one, and that one rolls around the cylinder and through for Taryn Frank. Let me tell you something, Dave. 
Tampa is right around the corner. You do not want to see this Commodore team in Tampa, Florida. A girly tries again, and it pays off. He'll head to the line. He's the key. He alone can give Alabama so much of what they need. When he's at the four position or the power forward position, and they've got Betty Ako at the five, he can post up, he can pick and pop. He has the mobility. He has to continue to guard a little bit better. He can help them get offensive rebounds, defensive rebounds. He has good size. The transfer from Furman is still learning, though, how to play and perform every single night against elite competition in the SEC. He's a three-time All-Southern Conference performer. Can really score the ball in a game where he had 30 against VMI while he was at Furman. Alabama, if you had to think about this first half in a nutshell, just the effort defensively has been there. I don't think they've been in sync offensively. Sure. Not much of a rhythm. And I don't know if that's because of Alabama or if it's because of Vanderbilt's defense. It's a combination of the two, and it typically is. And Coach Nate Oates has changed up the lineup. Uh, he's, he's prioritizing culture, uh, which you have to do when you're building a program. And this Vanderbilt team is a really good team that has shown that they can beat high-level teams this season. Oh, speaking of high-level, that was a high-level block by Miles, and it results in a layup by Davison at the other end. He two-handed took that ball off the backboard. <laughs> Pretty basketball. <laughs> We've seen it all year in the Southeastern Conference, and what you're looking for now is is can Vanderbilt respond to a Alabama trying to turn it up defensively? Watch this play by Miles. Well, we talked about some of the athleticism in this league and the type of impact that Darius Miles can make at 6'6". Those are the best blocks, right? You keep them in bounds, and if you can just grab them, it's even better. And he just picked up a foul. Now he'll have to check out. Holt comes back in. That's three fouls now in the first half on Miles. Melora Brown back to the free throw line for the Commodores, who are eight out of 12 at the line here in the first half. Alabama five out of six. And he gets the first one to go. Alabama tonight, 30% from the floor. See what they're doing. Second in the conference in scoring. Kentucky leads the way in points per game. They are right behind the Wildcats, but three-point field goals made. They've had somewhat of an issue knocking those home. They are 12th at 31%, but they still lead the league in three-pointers per game a little over nine. Sure. So you think about if, if that percentage improves, which goes along with if they can improve their defense and improve their decision making and that guy with the basketball is a huge part of that J.D. Davidson then those percentages will go up as well first time we've seen a zone tonight by coach Jerry Stackhouse and the Commodores Jackson back to Ellis they quickly get on him knocked out of bounds coach Nate Oates is trying to make the adjustment so that's the first chess, chess move by Stackhouse and so now if you're Alabama you like to shoot the three-point shot Vanderbilt's already at the three-point line let's see if the Commodores go back man-to-man -man or, or if they stay in the zone it's one on the shot clock really misses that three saved and another opportunity for Alabama Ellis that's a three hit the side of the backboard just a bad shot Let's see what it leads to for the Commodores. High arching three by Pippen is the answer. It's as simple as math class. Two plus two equals four. And a bad shot on one end usually equals a good look for the opposing team on the other end. Holt, his three on the way. Too strong. There's Shackelford read it well right into his lap. Alabama now two of 12 on their three-point attempts tonight. Here's Thomas off to Pippen. Ellis tried to poke it away. Alley-oop, Malora Brown. He's fouled by Gurley. That'll be the first on Gurley. Dave, did you notice the hit, though, by Scottie Pippen Jr.? 
So he came off of that screen, and when he received the basketball, he actually jumped into the defender. That's what I mean by his craftiness. You just don't know what he's going to do because he keeps you off guard defensively, whether he's jumping into you, whether he's stepping back. One of the most crafty guards that we have in the SEC for sure. One and one from Alora Brown. How about that? Touched about every part of the cylinder and went in. Well, we have another women's basketball doubleheader for you. Thursday night starts at 6.30 Eastern. We're featuring the second game between Aaliyah Boston and number one South Carolina and Texas A&M. The legend Gary Blair coming down the home stretch of his final season. A couple of national championship coaches going at it. We'll be right here on the SEC Network and, of course, the ESPN app. Another takeaway. Alabama has turned it over ten times already. Thomas, corner three, no good. Long rebound, and here goes Gurley with it. Got numbers, 4-2. They found the right guy. Shackelford knocks it home. I don't know if there's a better team. Well, you mentioned, we mentioned one of them earlier, Kentucky, Gonzaga. Uh, teams that just can make 8-0 runs, 11-1 runs quickly because of the way they dominate you offensively. Alabama's one of those teams where if you let them get loose, they can get loose in a hurry. Big get loose. Scotty Pippen Jr. is doing it now. What an answer. 13 now for Junior. A couple of threes. Another turnover. Frank. Here's Wright. Working on Gurley. Kicked out of bounds by Wright. It'll belong to Alabama. You know, Dave, it's been an intriguing basketball game. A lot of turnovers on both the tournament. The Diamond Head Classic along with LSU, Arkansas, and Florida, brought home championships from tournaments earlier this season. It's a loaded league. It's a loaded league, Dave. I was just thinking about 222. How about Alex English in South Carolina, the great legendary Ooh. Gamecock. He wore two in college, 22 in the NBA, 2 and 22. Just pulling them out, huh? I'm with you. I'm with you. That'll be an offensive foul against Gary. That'll be number two. On to on. Dave, we're gonna show you some some little some little guys that have big impacts. And the reason why we're gonna show you that list is because you're seeing one of them in Scotty Pippen Jr. today, but we're seeing the impact of JD Davidson at that point guard. He's he's gotta make better decisions. And the question is, are, are you kidding me? Jawan Gary is the one that made that charge. But when there's turnovers, when there's speed, there's tip of that all starts from the helm of that point guard position. He's either the hero or the goat. Drew Weicker checks in, the senior who just got a scholarship this year, the former walk-on, who has a few starts this season, comes in and buries a three. Looks like he's earned that scholarship to me. Good-looking jump shot. Good extra pass. Gary wide open, left it short. Rebound to Davison. J.D. seems to be everywhere today for Alabama. Boy, Gary's having a tough game. All right, we're going to give you a treat. We told you we'd wait to the second half. We're going to wait for the bigs. But how about these? Little guys making the biggest impact. Saber Wheeler, Ty Ty. We know you're on the squad, too, but Salvier's a little shorter. Wendell Green, Zep Jasper, we know. Kay Chandler, well, Kennedy Chandler, Zakai Ziegler, they kind of go hand-in-hand. Hand. Iverson Molinar, and then J.D. Note, who we know that's not a picture of J.D. Note. That was Jalen Williams. We'll talk about him a little in the second half. Davison, steal and dunk. Back to a seven-point game, 90 seconds to go before the break. Hold. That'll go against Shackelford. So 
free throws coming up. That's the 11th team foul against Alabama here in the first half. And this will be the 17th free throw coming up for Vanderbilt. They are 10 of 16 at the line. Weikert will tow it. He is two out of two on the year. Friday night. Boy, what a gymnastics triple header we have for you right here on the SEC Network and, of course, the ESPN app. Missouri and Alabama get a start at 6 Eastern. Then Auburn hosts Kentucky. We wrap up the night. The Georgia Gym Dogs at the barn in Fayetteville to take on Arkansas. That is a great lineup. Friday Night Heights right here on the network. Easiest basket of the night for Betty Ako. Well, Javon Quinlan is just making better decisions at that point guard position. They're just so much more settled uh, when he's there. And that comes from experience, but he also has the speed and the decision making, uh, the, uh, the ability to make decisions so much better right now. Right, has that block by Betty Ako, starts the break. Here's Shackelford. Well, Quinlan just posts up on the opposite corner, see if they can get it to him. Finally find him, but a blocking foul on Weikert as Gurley went baseline. Love the effort that time by Drew Weikert, but Joe Lindsay was correct on the call. And how about this block by Charles Bediaco? That's something that I think Alabama could use more, and I think he's going to continue to learn. That's part timing. Part just staying out of foul trouble so you can still maintain your aggressiveness to go after plays like that. So Gurley at the line for a one and one and will get the extra shot. Ediaco to the bench, Rojas back on the floor. 41 seconds to go before halftime. Both team shooting percentages have crept up as the half has gone on. Alabama. Up to 34%, Vanderbilt at 41%. Told you it was still early, Dave. Just wait till the second half. Just wait. Alabama still just 3 of 15, though. Three-point shooting tonight. Robbins off to Pippen. Here's Riker. Pippen saves it. Shot clock at five. Good well, defense. High arching shot. Does hit some iron. Knocked around. Here's the last chance now. Davison with five, four. In traffic. Lost the handle. And that's how it's going to end. So a five-point lead for the Vanderbilt Commodores. After one half of basketball, 37-32, our tally. Liam Robbins talked about that. That's what these two teams are fighting for here in the second half. Well, our delay to start the second half is because they went back and looked at some tape that our officials and decided to change a foul from Noah Gurley and give it to Jawan Gary. So they got that explained to each coach, and we're underway. So Gurley with two fouls. Robbins, boy, he has been living in behind the arc tonight. For Robbins, that's his fifth three-point attempt. He's hit a couple. I love how Scotty Pippen Jr. just uses that baseline like Steve Nash used to do with the Mavs. Get a ball to Vanderbilt. Well, they've got two options here. Now, Jerry Stackhouse is tremendous with running sets here out of bounds, but they can actually just throw it up top to Robbins. Long three off the mark from Lawrence. Here's Shackelford back the other way. Shackelford in that first half, two of five, five points, no assists, two turnovers. Davison. You mentioned it in our uh, Carvana first half stats, the 12 Alabama turnovers. That's a big number, but I think even the more significant part of that was the 21 points off those turnovers for Vanderbilt. Took advantage of it. Yeah, the, the two are connected, and I say this all the time. Uh, if you're turning the basketball over, your defense is going to suffer, and that's one of the reasons why Alabama's defense has suffered this season. 
is the inability to take care of the basketball consistently. I've heard coach around this coaches for years around this league say it over and over. It's hard to play defense when you're running backwards. <laughs> Yeah, and it's hard to get offense, offensive transition when you're taking the basketball out of the net all the time. J.D. Davidson in that first half, I thought he had great numbers in regards to nine points and seven huge rebounds, defensive rebounds, uh, five of those. But he turned the basketball over five times. He has to continue to improve for Alabama to advance come postseason. That foul will go against Benny Anko. That'll be number three for Charles. So Robbins will go to the free throw line. Liam, the graduate student out of Davenport, Iowa. Think about Liam Robbins, the, the seven-footer that obviously freshman and sophomore year, Drake, and then junior year at Minnesota. The experience that he brings, the confidence. I think he truly elevates this Vanderbilt team to a tournament team. I really do. I just don't know if they have enough time left in the season to prove it. Lawrence in the open floor got it to go. Another turnover by Alabama leads to more point production for the Commodores. Shackleford. They get the paint touch. Early for three. How about that? Gently kisses it off the back of the iron and it rolls through the cylinder. As my man Pat Bradley in the studio always says, the young man's been living right there. <laughs> yeah. When you get a bounce like that. <laughs> See, it's got to get to. So many guards have problems getting the basketball inside to the big guys on the block right now. You have got to teach entry post passes if you're on the collegiate level because they're not doing it enough at the high school and AAU level. Guys just don't even know how to get it inside. Improve your angle. Fake shot fake, pass fake. Use the dribble to improve your angle, but you've got to get it inside to the block at the right time. Lawrence. Oh, good. Knocked out of bounds. A couple of years ago, we were up in Lexington. Didn't we do a little segment with you in the entry pass? Absolutely. I, I posted up. Right. Not enough people watched it, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what we were talking about where Noel Gurley hits the back of the rim and just like a knuckleball slides on in the net. Gurley had it blocked. Here comes Pippen the other way. Boy, Robbins tripped up by Betty Ako. That'll be number four on Charles Bediaco. Just got tangled up with Robbins as they're running through the lane. Well, you got a young man going against a grown man. <laughs> Charles Bediaco, freshman, his first year in college basketball, seven feet, 215 pounds versus Liam Robbins, who's got about 35 pounds, right? 250, and he, you know, draws the foul from the official. So that'll get Betty Aka to the bench. Rojas on the floor. Along with Gurley to kind of man the post area with Melora Brown and Liam Robbins on the floor for Vanderbilt. Here is Robbins. Big fella. Showing a little touch tonight. Team that's already went in and won at Arkansas. Knocked off a top 25 LSU team at the time. It'll belong to Vanderbilt. Just once again, the correct pass, but you've got a seven-footer 250 who can put it on the floor a couple of times off the bounce and knock down a mid-range jump shot. That's something impressive. And who was this ball out on? Nate Oates thinks last touch by Vanderbilt. Let's see. Nah, it's off the knee of Noah Gurley. Ooh, although, did you see Lawrence reach in there? Might have touched it. Did he touch it? He might have. We just kind of teased you with that video, but Lawrence might have, might have touched it. Regardless, Vanderbilt gets the possession. Pippen. Oh, how about that nifty move? Melora Brown traveled. Too nifty for Melora Brown. <laughs> <laughs> it was. 
And that's why I think Scotty Pippen Jr. will be lead at the next level. He'll definitely be at the next level because he makes the right decision. He plays the game the right way. Rojas runs right into Malore Brown. Gurley working on Robbins. Boy, and then Malore Brown helps him out. Ellis back to Gurley. Boy, that's a tough shot. Fall away three. Rojas fouled though by right. Vanderbilt bails out Alabama by seven. Scotty Pippen Jr. with 13 to lead everybody in scoring, but Liam Robbins, his teammate, right on his heels with a dozen. Rojas knocks home that free throw. 77% foul shooter on the year. Only played five minutes against Kentucky. Was held scoreless in that game on Saturday. It's something about a five to even just a single digit lead against Alabama that doesn't feel as safe as it may be against some other teams because of the way they can go on runs. Robbins catches the alley oop, tried to get to Melora Brown. It did so, but then Melora Brown threw it away. Quinterly, shackle for good ball fake. Robbins the rebound. Take that look every time if you're coach Nate Oaks. Griffin Jr. Boy, they double teamed him and they left, and Lucky Pippen didn't make that one with the left hand. Back the other way, Quinterly in the open floor. Gets it to Ellis, fires for three, no good. Gurley keeps it alive. Shackelford. Quinterly. Got it. You see the difference, though, Dave? See how the basketball popped? Yeah. It wasn't hesitancy. They were working together cohesively as a unit. That's the difference when Javon Quinterly's at that point guard position. Quite a few Alabama fans here at Memorial Gymnasium. Making some noise. Two point game. Pippen Jr. has answered tonight when Alabama's made some runs. Gets the assist here as Thomas hits the corner three. Thirty-five percent three-point career shooter. But Thomas is a much better shooter than he's even shown this year. I think he's got one of the best strokes in the SEC. Now oh, that ball didn't go in just now for Alabama. Crazy. Sitting on the rim. Vanderbilt turns it over. Here is Gurley back the other way. Boy, if that's not a carry, I don't know what is. Goodness. We know those don't get called anymore. <laughs> you kidding me? <laughs> Good thing for Alabama. Quinterly hammers home that three. Nate Oates imploring his club to play some defense. And this is what I mean when I talked about that single-digit lead just doesn't feel safe against a team like Alabama. They go on runs so quickly. Thomas, no good. Tapped around, right into the hands of Lawrence. Takes it himself. Offensive foul. Rojas steps in there and draws the charge. Jaden Shackelford drawing three. You see how quick that pass was? Because of how quickly Keon Ellis passed it to Javon Quinterly, that cut out the re recovery time. And then here, this is just Javon Quinterly again, showing you range to transfer from Villanova, just really displaying a full repertoire. And then James Rojas getting right there, giving up of his body, and Tony Green making the correct call with the offensive charge. Alabama hasn't led this game since it was five to four. Quinterly hit his last two threes. Rest of the team just four of four, a uh, four of twenty. Quinterly two out of two. Rojas lines it up. Tapped around. Gurley got it. He'll head to the line. And the Crimson Tide are making some noise here on the road. Todd fans have traveled tonight. You see Noah Gurley, we talked about the fact that he could be a difference maker. 
and he certainly has been. How about him fighting for the rebound? He has the size advantage. He gets and establishes the inside position. Very rarely do we talk about establishing position on the offensive end. We do it defensively all the time. Watch Oscar Sheedway at Kentucky. He does a phenomenal job. There's no difference between his box out on the offensive or the defensive end. Noah Gurley shows you his version of that here on the road tonight. Gurley at the free throw line. 58% on the year. He's in double figures with three rebounds and a chance to give the tie the lead. Got it. First lead since it was 5-4 to four at the 16-02 mark of the first half. Well, you've seen the counterpunch now by the Tide. Let's watch and see how the Commodores respond. Weikert on the floor for Vanderbilt. Here's Wright. Taken away. And a foul. That'll go against Wright. Nate Oates was pleading for, we're well, not saying there's makeup calls, but usually it, it, they'll get a call that goes to their benefit a little bit later in the basketball game. And there's a hold on Thomas that time. Patrick Evans making that call. See? That's like the officials just saying, are we friends again? Is everything cool? Not till this game's over. <laughs> <laughs> An offensive foul against Gurley on a moving screen. So that would have been a layup for Alabama sure. on that steal. And now they turn it over on the offensive foul and get nothing out of it. Well, one thing that you have to do is when you listen to the committee, when they talked about the first 16 teams, you heard roll games common opponents and quad one wins. This is a road game for Alabama and in road games you're not going to get every call. That's why the committee appreciates road victory so much. Balls on the deck comes out to Weikert. They were swinging around the perimeter. Solid recovery that time by Alabama defensively. You can tell this veteran group Quinterly Ellis Jaden Shackelford in the lineup now. Thomas no good, Ellis a rebound. Rojas, got it! Foul on Frank. Rojas to the free throw line. You know, again, three of those teams that were in the Final Four last year, Alabama's beat them. Rojas, I'm going to wait to tell you this number. Okay, now I can say it because I didn't want to jinx him because the, the <laughs> announcer jinx is real. He's made 13 straight free throws over the last six games now. And Rojas having a nice night at the line. Alabama 11 of 12 as a team from the strike. Here's Robbins. He's got a dozen points. Miles defending him. Spins right. Follow is good by Melora Brown. So beautiful. He remained poised, which got him a good look. And that good look helped open up the offensive rebounding lanes. Foul on Weikert as Davison took him to the basket. You see Liam Robbins, he takes his time. You see how many defenders are there? You got really four defenders. And J.D. Davison isn't quite there, but because Rojas has to come over and help, that allows for the offensive rebound of Malora Brown. When you think about back to the basket basketball, not only does it give you interior scoring, better looks on the perimeter, but it also opens up offensive rebounding lanes more. Davidson now in double figures. Seven rebounds. This all came in the first half. Tapped around, misses that. Loose ball in the deck. Comes out to Ellis. He'll fire for three, and he's fouled by DeZoni. And you hear some boos from the crowd. I think they felt like Drew Reichert got hit on that play going after the loose ball. 
I'm not sure they weren't right on that, but this time of the year, I mean, you got to fight, scratch, and crawl for every win, regardless of who you are. You think about the multiple overtimes, Houston uh, able to knock off Wichita State. Every team is so hungry right now. The hungrier teams win in February, and they win in March. Ellis with eight points, five rebounds. The second game of our Wednesday night men's basketball doubleheader will feature Jabari Smith, number three Auburn. He'll host Ole Miss, 8.30 Eastern time, 7.30 Central. They'll come your way after Mississippi State and South Carolina set the table for you. You can see both those right here on the network. And, of course, the ESPN app, Keon Ellis. He's, you can see why he leads the conference in free throw percentage. Alabama now up by six. Vanderbilt led by five at the break. Alora Brown spins on Rojas. Got it. So now Vanderbilt knows where their bread will be buttered. They have to continue to pound the basketball inside. You see it in the Big Ten all the time with multiple bigs. That's what they're going to have to do if they want to win this basketball game. Davison turns into a double team. Robbins there to attack. Battle for the basketball comes out to Quinterly. Behind Ooh. the back to Rojas. Hello. JQ in the building. I see you, young fella. Laura Brown. Lawrence. Pippen. Ellis guarding him. Pippen fires away. No good, and a foul underneath. That's going to go against Quinterly. Quinterly gets the foul on the defensive end. Matched up against other quality front lines, how they perform, but the depth of the front line. Pippen. Oh! I see you, big fella. Liam Robbins. He's in his flex zone for sure. Well, he's feeling healthy in the day. Yes, he is, and looking good. Robbins with 14. Here's Quinterly now. Ellis, ball fake. Back to Quinterly. Taps to Davison. Taken away by Wright. Good play by Davison to get his hand on the basketball. We have seen two dynamic plays. Scotty Pippen Jr. draws three once again. James Rojas, he's on the first floor. Liam Robbins goes to the pit house and finishes over the top of his head. But it all is created by the drive, the draw, and the dish by Scotty Pippen Jr. Back to back games with 14 now for Robbins. How about the big man? He is feeling it tonight. He missed a ton of basketball with injuries and now coming into his own late in the season. Rojas answers back. Nice. That's what champions do. They continue to answer in a hostile environment on the road. Dave, did I tell you in the first half we had better offense in the second half? You did. You called it. You see how Alabama's fronting the post, and it causes a turnover. Nice job by Noah Gurley. We've seen both teams go to where their strength is. For Vanderbilt, Robbins on the inside. And for Alabama, they go to the inside, but it's more using their foot speed with the drive and the dish. Robbins, this is just the sixth game that he has played this year. Nice take to the basket by Quinterly. Remember, he didn't get the start tonight. Message being sent by his coach, Nate Oates. I'll tell you, the one guy we haven't seen in a while is Jaden Shackleford.
Malore Brown. That one is rejected by Gurley. Shot clock at five. Pippen fires with two. Tapped around. Ellis wins it. Rojas finally getting back in the action. Woo! I see you, young fella. East Coast in the building. Quinterly with the three. He's up to 13. You, young fella. East Coast in the building. Quinterly with the three. He's up to 13. He's three of three from behind the arc. Timeout, Vanderbilt. You think about it, Chapman were to come back off of that hamstring injury, what kind of difference he could make uh, in Tampa. But right now, they've got a hole to get out of with an Alabama team who showed why they're one of the more dangerous teams in college basketball. So Alabama had 32 points in the first half. They have 30 right now. How about the fast oh, break? Davison to Quinterly, who is <laughs> feeling it here at Memorial Gym. Fun to watch when they're able to play their style. And the way you keep them from playing their style, if you're the Commodores, is you got to score some baskets. I like going and playing off of Robbins, but you've got to get him the basketball early in the shot clock. Well, it's a completely different Bama team than we saw in the first 20 minutes. Well, they stopped turning the basketball yeah. over. Pippen at the front of the rim as the shot clock horn sounds. Ellis saves it. The only three turnovers here in the second half for Alabama after a dozen in the first half. Well, and that's because that man right there, J Javon Quinterly, is at the point guard position. Even if he doesn't make the best decision all the time, he usually isn't going to turn it over. Jordan Wright's had a very quiet game, just three points, only three shot attempts. That is off the hands of Studi, and that'll take us to another timeout. It is getting late here in Nashville, and Alabama putting on a charge in the second half. Of all those guys, I mean, Cam Newton, I thought, was the hardest guy to ever tackle in college football. <laughs> well, I think maybe the hardest guy to tackle in pro football has got to be Derrick Henry. No doubt. I mean, the Titan season just completely changed when he got hurt this year. That was a shame. You see where Alabama, who's averaging over nine threes a game now, is 7 of 24. You said if they got six in this second half, you felt like they'd be right on the money. Looks like you could be correct. Let's see. The Commodores are really good at making runs late because they are very good at offensive execution. Let's see what set Stackhouse comes out of the timeout with. It's been hard in the second half for Pippen to get, get going offensively. He could use some help. Maybe that's the start. Studi knocks it home. Well, you have to remember, Studi has that championship pedigree. Davison. Shackleford in and out. Winterly guarding Pippen. Davison with another rebound. That's number nine. Good pass. Quinterly. And a block foul against Vanderbilt. Let's see if that's Robbins. No, Scotty Pippen picks it up. Well, this is good patience and poise. And talked about Miles Studi, the sophomore, 6'7, 210 pounds out of Washington, D.C. Quinterly has been the difference here in the second half, without a doubt. Well, we have another women's basketball doubleheader coming your way Thursday night. Starts at 6.30 Eastern. We're featuring our second game, though, as Aaliyah Boston and number one South Carolina coming off a big win over Tennessee on Sunday. We'll take on Texas a &M. It's all right here on the SEC Network and, of course, the ESPN. So Quinterly 
with 15 second half points. Five of seven, three of three from behind the arc. Half the round, and Quinterly has it. I love the no call. Jaden Shockley tried to jump into Memphis and get a call, but Joe Lindsay wasn't going for it. Quinterly a little bit out of control. They're going to give it to Vanderbilt. You know, Javon Quinterly didn't get starts now. Message sent, message received. I love the response. He's showing a lot of maturity. But for players out there, the coaches aren't trying to lose basketball games. So if they make decisions, then they're on the same side of the table as you. They're trying to win the game. Pippen. Boy, Patrick Evans calls a foul. Timeout on the floor. Vanderbilt's down 10. Do they have walk him away? I thought that was a great job of this crew just allowing him to show his emotions and not call that technical foul. I get a whistle in my house and walk around with it. Kind of a warning whistle oh, for my kids. I, I, don't, I was about to say, for your kids only, that's not going to work with the wife. I know that. Yeah, I know who's got the whistle in the house. Dave Neal. Uh, yeah. So Vanderbilt going to try to get back into this at the free throw line with a couple by Ooh. Pippen who got hammered. Oh boy, Ellis got him. Just a hard foul. Making sure that those two arms didn't get up. So here is Scotty Pippen Jr. leading the league in points. Averaging 19 and a half a game. Career 76% foul shooter. Well, we often, from a national standpoint, as you see a nice rebound by Malloy Brown. And again, right? Jerry Stackhouse is getting the calls now. But we, we hear about the West Coast Conference and San Fran and St. Mary's and, of course, Gonzaga and, and BYU. But at the time where BYU was extremely healthy and playing as good as anyone, Vanderbilt on a neutral site was able to beat them in Hawaii. Uh, so this Commodore team, and that was without Robbins, has proven that they're a formidable opponent. And Alabama has not squeaked out this victory here in Nashville just yet. And Pippen up to 16 points with six assists. Vanderbilt has cut this down to seven. Here's Quinterly. Boy, he's got it on the string. Davison. Tough shot by Davis in front of the rim. Rebound to Studi. Excellent defensive trip by the Commodores. And a stagnant offensive trip by the Alabama Crimson Tide. Pippen. Oh, probably should have taken it himself. Oh, Quinterly kicked it off his knee. It'll belong to the Commodores. You don't mind that. I think Alabama is best, obviously, when they're in transition. And there's a tendency when you're on the road, got a seven-point lead, to try to slow it down. There's too much game left. Uh, but you do have to make sure that you're cognizant here for the Crimson Tide on the defensive end. Thomas fouled on the three. Quinterly fouled him, and that'll send Thomas to the line. Trey Thomas, one of them. Many good players that are coming out of Canada now. There's been such a pool and funnel of players to yeah. go all across college basketball. Good credit for Coach Jerry Stackhouse going and finding talent everywhere. That is five straight points at the line now for Vanderbilt. Trying to make it six and to cut this to a four point game. Got him. Two forty-eight to go. Quinterly in traffic. Bediaco with four fouls grabs that rebound. Studi 
will pick up the foul. Well, great job of Charles Bediaco going to the offensive glass. And I think it was the correct call, Cowan, a foul. But Charles Bediaco, at 7 feet, 215 pounds, has to continue to get stronger. Uh, there's going to be times, whether it's uh, in March Madness, where he's not going to get that call. He's going to have to be strong and secure that rebound, regardless of whether the foul is called or not. Bediaco, 60% at the line. Rattles that one in. Yeah, good touch by the freshman. Good poise in a hostile environment here on the road. Robinson in the game. Laura Brown to the bench. Game's got physical. Last nine points make it ten. The last ten points combined in this game have been at the free throw line. Betty Anko will check out. Early on. They'll run Pippen off the ball now. Thomas gets it to him. Guarded by Ellis. That's a good matchup there. Here's Wright. Lost the handle in traffic. Gurley has it. It'll belong to the tie with 2.17 to go. Boy, it's been a frustrating night for Wright. Just three points on one of five from the field. Well, and there's a lot of guards that have frustrating nights against this backcourt of Alabama. When they play at a high level, when I say high level, means when they hit that switch, when they turn it on. Sometimes they turn it off in that loss at Missouri, and I think Missouri has proven that at times they can compete with anybody, but Alabama didn't have it turned on. The same thing at Georgia. When they're playing at an elite level, this backcourt is as good as your final. Boy, Curley lost it right in front of his head coach. Two ten to go. Six point game. Pippen. It's a little room. Blocking foul. Count it. The SEC's leading score up to 18, looking for 19. Well, it was patience, Dave. He read the screen and roll. He does it as good as anyone. He saw that Noah Gurley was trying to jump on the high side, and so he knew he had the baseline open, and he was able to get that first step that allowed him to get to the basket for the three-point play the old-fashioned way. Pippen Jr., 18 points, 6 of 9 at the line. He has 6 assists, and for the second consecutive game, has 6 steals. Well, that's where he's really stepped up his game the most, is defensively. Uh, he is an attacking defender. And that same basketball IQ he uses on offense, he's now beginning to use it more to elevate his defensive ability on the defensive end. quiet all game and he just rips the net from the corner well you could tell when he received the basketball how he took the shot he wants that shot with the game on the line that's why I laugh because as a player you love these type of environments take a look there's fast break J.D. Davison Shackelford take a picture I'm knocking this one down follow throughout nothing but nylon this is why he wow about an inch difference and you know that's a skill right that's a skill that he knows where he is on the floor he knows that he can get that close and tight rope the sideline and still make the plays that he needs to play needs to make got them both four point game 140 to go Quinterly's been the story in the second half with 17 well, look for them to spread the floor. Javon Quinterly is not the guy you want to press if you're Jordan Wright. He will go right by you. The question is what kind of help and where the help comes from. Look for the slip here. There it is for Shackelford. Oh, good. Rebound to Studi. 
He kind of rushed that shot a little bit. In the Commodores, the door's still open. Pippen. Blocking foul against Rojas. Guess who's going back to the free throw line for free throw attempts 13 and 14. After that battery and assault. <laughs> That time by James Rojas. The fouls keep getting a little bit harder here by Alabama. Oof. Now that actually a lot of that contact was initiated by Scottie Pippen Jr. Still the correct call. How about his stat line? 21 points, efficient from the free throw line. Now 10 of 13. Ooh, seven of eight at the line is half. Well, he's showing young players that want to dribble the basketball between their legs 25 times and shoot fadeaway jump shots. You can control the game from the charity strike. Two-point game. Quinterly in traffic, throws it up, no whistle. Pippen back the other way. Bandy's down two. Pippen. Another foul will send him to the free throw line with a chance to tie it. Rojas whistled for the foul. We talked about Alabama's fans and how they travel. These Commodore fans have continued to get a little bit louder down the stretch here. You think about the home court advantage in the SEC. SEC home court winning percentage is the best in all of college basketball. And one of the reasons are because of the fan bases across this league. And that's why I think Tampa, Florida is going to be so important for fans to get out and travel. This is the fourth straight game with Pippen with 23 or more points. Misses that one and keeps Alabama out in front by one. 15 second differential. You do not have to foul if you're the Vanderbilt Commodores. Gurley just checked in for Rojas. And a foul. Gary Stackhouse can't believe it. Arm bar against Jordan Wright. Well, that's how you know you got a veteran officiating crew, quality crew here. You don't call the basketball game any different in the last minute than you do in the first minute of the game. It was the correct call. Big free throws. Now, the, the choice that you have if you coach Jerry Stackhouse is whether he makes one or whether he makes two on what you do on the offensive end. About that response that you talked about. JQ. 16 in the second half. Ice water. Three point game. 26 seconds to go. Stack wants a timeout. Let's see what he draws up here. That is the offensive unit with 24.2 seconds to play. <laughs> well, he's no way Alabama player. was going to let him get the basketball. Well, no, he's a heady player. Yeah. That, that was a foul, but... Free throw 17 and 18 tonight. Two-point game. Two hundred and twenty-one free throw attempts on the year now for Pippen. Now, obviously, you know that Vanderbilt has to foul you if you're Alabama, so you just need to be strong with the basketball. The clock is your ally. For the Commodores, I try to see if I can get something. In the backcourt, and Tony Green calls that foul against Scotty Pippen Jr. Look at the left part of your screen. 
I like the call. Commodore fans don't like it, but Scotty Pippen Jr. was moving into the pathway of. And that'll send Miles to the free throw line. Miles, 75% on the year. His first free throw attempt of this game is perfect. Now, the good news for Vanderbilt is no time went off the clock. Sure. Vanderbilt does have a timeout left. Alabama has three timeouts remaining. Missed it. Malora Brown the rebound. Jordan Wright gets it to Pippen. Here we go. The way the whistles have been blowing, if I'm Scotty Pippen Jr., I'm getting to the rim. And right now they're taking a lot of time off of the clock to be down two. Under 10 seconds. Here's Wright. Sees a little bit of room. Goes to the rim. Missed the layup. Oh, my goodness. He missed the chippy. He can't believe it. Still 4.8 seconds left. Been like that. If I'm Vanderbilt, I wouldn't mind fouling before the ball even comes in. We'll get it to Miles. He heaves it down to Pointerly, up ahead to Ellis. And that'll do it. Alabama will walk out of here with a win. They had to fight to the very end, but they win it by 274.